Hello and welcome to the Engage Brain Podcast. Thank you for coming on uh, to talk to me about uh, stress and some of the maybe more negative ways that we uh, cope with it. Uh, so I'm talking to Nate or Nathan, Nate, Nate, Nate uh, and Brenton. Uh, about uh, stress and, and alcohol. So what got uh, you guys interested in choosing this as your topic? Um, just that it's becoming more like modern, like a lot of people either drink or use drugs. So I don't know, that kind of interested me. I feel like that's more relevant to <clears throat> kids our age and the ways they cope with it. So I just felt interested to look up more like why and what the effects of that were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think on the first day we looked at <coughs> things specific to college students and we find that college students are stressed. There's lots of demands that you have. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been looking at you know school demands and family demands and kind of like every part of your life there's yep. something and so you're always sacrificing and being pulled in different directions. And one of the easiest ways to, to cope with that is, is turning to things that make you feel good in uh, yeah. the present. Yeah, uh, even short if they, term, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, and looking at uh, some of your research in, in drugs and alcohol uh, and stress, what have you been finding that's been interesting so far? Well, I've been finding, I and mean, we've already talked about this, but mm-hmm. it kept coming up that everyone that started, like they used drugs and alcohol, it helped them for the short term, mm-hmm. but then the long term it kept leading them back to more drugs, more alcohol, alcoholism, and they just needed more and more help later on. Yeah, yeah. I learned that it uh, really interferes with your sleeping patterns. Mm-hmm. I, I was unaware that it you don't get that deep sleep yeah. use, when you are drinking or um, using drugs or anything like that, so that, that surprised me. I was unaware of that. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I would agree with you, too, because I thought that um, like if you're getting eight hours, I thought eight hours was eight, eight hours. Yeah. Any either way, but if you've been drinking, it's that light sleep where you keep waking up a lot of moving around. Yeah, yeah, and and sometimes if it's <clears throat> even more, you uh, drink even more um, that light sleep, and you're not really remembering that you're waking up or you know like exactly. Just not getting in that yeah, deep. like like we talked that one day in class, like where you mentioned three beers, and that's still gonna affect your sleeping, and then yeah. you throw in the people that drink a bunch, like. Right eight to nine and then I can't even imagine like what their sleep patterns would be then so yeah it's crazy to think about yeah but it, I mean I definitely see um, how it's it's so easy because it does in the short term um, mm-hmm. helps you forget your problems you have fun mm-hmm. um, it's oftentimes a social thing uh, so you're doing things that are helpful <laughs> just with maybe yeah. some things that aren't. I also think it's like yeah. Um, it, it like puts people to sleep a lot easier than you would think mm-hmm. and then so like that's another thing that surprised me because usually when people use drugs or drink they'll fall asleep easier and that I, I was unaware of that with them falling asleep easier or anything like that it's just they're not getting good sleep they're just getting yeah. sleep yeah. like so that was kind of like I said interesting to learn about mm-hmm. yeah it's not uh, <clears throat> probably not a common thing in college but the nightcap yeah. uh, where, where you just have something to go I don't know that a nightcap is uh, is too bad for, for people that does kind of help you go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And I think um, another kind of twist on, on your um, on your study is that there is lots of research out there that shows like moderate drinking mm-hmm. is helpful to our health mm-hmm. in different ways. Yeah. Uh, so we have like this weird balance between like, you know, not drinking at all, maybe not the best, mm-hmm. drinking too much, maybe not the best, but then where's that weird middle? Where's the mm-hmm. median, yeah. Yeah, particular to a per- one person. Yeah, and uh, you actually talked to me about it. It was uh, like the zero one two. Mm-hmm. So like having the a couple of drinks is not bad for you, but you have to like you have to like pace yourself. Like you can't just go right in have your three beers and then you're fine or whatever. Mm-hmm. You have to like slowly sip on your drink and stuff like that. Like you can't you just like. You're supposed to eat when when you drink too. Mm-hmm. Just like a couple of the things you're supposed to do when drinking, so it, you're not getting the bad aspect. Yeah. So, and then psychology last semester <clears throat> that I took, mm-hmm. we were talking about whether or not like wine once a week was good or bad. Okay. And like our conclusion was that it's healthy for you, 
unless you're pregnant, then there's <laughs> yeah. no right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the zero um, mm -hmm. is um, zero if you have like trouble with um, alcohol, or mm -hmm. zero if you're pregnant or have mm -hmm. other health complications that, uh, or you're you're taking medication that um, interferes with, yeah. with yeah. alcohol. Uh, but when I heard that, so this was um, I learned that zero one two last semester uh, when Mary Boots from the SASC came in, uh, which is, uh, I can only remember it as SASI. I think it's like a substance abuse. Uh, yeah, S substance. It, it's substance abuse service service center. Service center. Yeah. Yep. Uh, to just down downtown Dubuque. Yeah. Yep. Um, and uh, it's, so she came in to talk to drugs and behavior about um, how how to reach out for treatment for for drug and alcohol and other addiction problems. And like I had never heard of the zero one two rule, and yeah. I think mm -hmm. I still have like the college skewed uh, mindset of oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. of, of yeah. drinking, where it's like you know having two is like. Well, I mean, like, what's what's even the purpose? Yeah, yeah, it seems yeah. pointless. Yeah, yeah, yeah because uh, it's like, oh, I'm, I haven't had like the fun aspect of, mm -hmm. of this yet, and so it, it, it kind of inflates to you know, like four or five is like the standard. Like, uh, that's like minimum. To, yeah, exactly, and that's why, like I mentioned before, just the fact that if you have those four or five, mm -hmm. your sleep pattern, you're not gonna get deep sleep, and that's just crazy to think because the four to five is like what I consider normal. Right, exactly. So it's like, it's really weird. Yeah, and, and yeah, it's, like I said, I still have that inflated <clears throat> sense, like, oh, like if I have 10 light beers or whatever, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like, okay, like that's, you know, like <laughs> a normal college night out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, yeah, just don't understand it. And the w weird thing about sleep is that there, there's a myth out there that you can catch up on sleep. Uh, mm, no, you, no, can, you can't uh, catch, uh, catch up on sleep. There's no uh, coming Yeah, back a lot of people it. like... Uh, our coach or will tell us like if you don't get that eight hours before and then the next day you're sleeping 12 hours to try and make up for it mm -hmm. you're not making up for it you're just getting 12 hours that day yeah. and not getting enough that other day yeah so yeah that mm -hmm. yeah you can't catch up on sleep sadly yeah. uh and so how about is, is there anything confusing we talked a little bit about the, maybe the confusing or the um, misunderstanding about like different levels uh, of alcohol, is there anything else that's been confusing? Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. I can't either. I feel like there was something I was yeah. confused about looking at last night, though. Um, when we're doing the infographic, I can't remember because that's what you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I remember we were looking at the one website and I asked you a question about it, and I yeah. Um. Try to take a, a peek at it. Yeah. What was that about? I don't even know if it's in our infographic. Uh, yeah. It was something we were debating about including or not because mm -hmm. we weren't sure if it was true and then we just kind of let it go. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, I, I think, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, for me, uh, <clears throat> still uh, kind of past college uh, moving from say college beers to like normal beers yeah uh, another thing that mary boots kind of opened my eyes to was that uh like kind of some of the craft uh style uh beers that maybe are a little bit uh, higher alcohol content uh like two of those were equivalent to like four uh um you know like normal size uh, yeah drinks or whatever, the standard yeah uh, drinking mm -hmm. thing and so like um you know like having two of those thinking oh yeah like i'm within the limits whoops <laughs> no you're old yeah, yeah the, the thing so kind of that's like, crazy because even those people like that have yeah. that too and they think they're mm -hmm. they're fine yeah they're, they just they're not yeah so and so what it opened my eyes to was you know kind of like the, <laughs> um how easy it might be to um, drive impaired uh, oh yeah, uh, like looking at what 0.08 feels like um, if you like do the like some calculator or app or whatever where yeah. you like, keep track of uh, what you've had and when. Uh, like yeah, two beers puts you pretty close to that um, 0.08 depending on like, Dang, your, crazy. your sex yeah. and your uh, weight, weight and how fast your particular body um, processes uh, everything. Uh, but like when I put it in the calculator and like see what I feel like, I was like, oh wow, this is like you know almost normal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Though, because my uncle brews his own beer, and his beers mm -hmm. range anywhere from four percent to thirteen percent. Yeah. Like, there's a huge difference. Yeah, is he local here? Yeah, I don't know if he sells it. I think he just brews it for like family and stuff. Okay, and, I wasn't sure if he was part of the um, SOBs Society of Brewing. He, he might be. I can ask him. Oh, okay. Yeah, he it, has like a I'm... nice little shindig. I forgot what it was called, but 
it's machine that he can make. Yeah. He can make it in like a week. It right. Big. Hmm. Yeah, there's a shop downtown, uh, brew house. Um, oh, yep. Yeah. No, it's that. He's not in with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I suppose we shouldn't talk about home <laughs> brewing <laughs> on the Dale thing. But yeah. I'm also a home brewer and um, excited to get back into it. Um, the last couple of years, just living in apartments, it's doesn't it's not conducive to yeah, yeah to brewing. Mm-hmm. Um, so going back to, uh, is there, um, going forward, do you think that there's anything that we're starting to understand about, um, stress and, and um, alcohol use or drug use? Um, starting to understand that that can be the cause of a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Instead, like, most people try to use it just to relieve it, and that can actually be the cause of why people are getting more stressed out. Or it's another, like, it's a thing they use, to, the short term, where they'll have that short-term effect where they're fine, but they're actually just putting that stress off. They're not relieving it or getting mm-hmm. rid of it. They're just putting it off a couple mm-hmm. of hours or even a day. Yeah. And then when it comes back, it's either worse or just as you left it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, learning, yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, we're kind of seeing you know, different responsible ways to do it, but also um, the balance between, like, yeah, sometimes you overindulge and that's not a problem. Yeah. It's just mm-hmm. a, a problem when it becomes a pattern. Exactly. Uh, and yeah. So how do you like kind of stay out of those patterns? So an, another rule that I heard of uh, was like um, making sure to take at least two, uh, if not three days off a week, uh, instead of getting into that like every day daily every type day. thing. Yeah. yeah. Or every other day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that you kind of just like stay out of the, <laughs> the pattern and how it snowballs and um, kind of you go from you know like college years to graduating and then still like going out and yeah. Like, how that can lead to longer term problems. Yeah, alcoholism and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was just some of the stuff that, uh, again, Mary Boots from Sassy was saying, you know, like taking two days a week uh, off and just watching for the patterns of, um, how, is it something I always turn to for, for coping or other uh, other things that I do, you know, like yeah. working out or doing things yeah. with friends. And, uh, and there's a lot of ways to cope with stress too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And turning to alcohol and drugs. With it's probably one of the lower ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, I think it's kind of moving away from the just alcohol stress uh, and oops, um, and some of the uh, things here. Uh, some of those questions I asked before we started recording. Uh, is there anything uh, that you're a part of that you'd like to promote? Uh, I think I'll probably get these out today or tomorrow. Um, no, I mean football. A football but <laughs> next year. Yeah, yeah, next year's football team. <laughs> looking, looking to have quite the year. Uh, really turn around. Didn't have the year we wanted, but. Yeah. We're looking to bounce back. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel we're really working our butts off this off season, so mm-hmm. I'm confident in our ability to play at a high level next year. Mm-hmm. Nate, um, come watch our interbreed basketball team. <laughs> we have big, big, high expectations for next year. Okay. Also, uh, Loris basketball team takes on UD Saturday, at two and four. So. Okay. I hope we get quite the crowd there. <laughs> it's tough turn to turn. Exactly, break, yeah. exactly. But I'll be there. I know some of the football football players will be there. I think we're trying to do a fundraiser too. Oh, okay. football team. So okay, the fifty fifty raffle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are usually good for at least a hundred dollars. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sadly, yeah. Yeah, and then Nate, you work at Sherman. Sherman Williams. Williams. Yep. Throw it out there. Sell some paint. Come buy paint. <laughs> <laughs> How they drive? Come to my store. Perfect. Uh, and then the last kind of weird question, that I, it's maybe a stumper for many people. Is there anything that you've come across that you want to tell other people about uh, or no? I mean, you say seem like a nature guy. Yep. Mines of Spain, Swiss Valley, there's um, FDR. I don't know if you ever heard I of that. I haven't that one. So that's, it's like a, kind of like a bike park, but it's oh, wow. bike slash hike behind the Children's Zoo off North Cascade Road. Okay. And then, yeah, behind John Deere's and cool little scenery place. Not much of a, there's one trail out there, but okay. there's not, that's more of a trail that people go and fish on. So, okay. some local spots. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Any, anything? For me, no. Right. Not that, I don't know. I've been here a couple months, so yeah. I'm still trying to figure, right. find some things. Yeah, uh, just, uh, you know, other things that you've come across. If there's any, like, sweet uh, Christmas gifts that you got that uh, you think other people should have or... 
No, I got I got clothes, so okay. I got I clothes got and money. Pants. So yeah, all right. I did. Yep, sweatpants. Joggers. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Those are the, the stuff. Uh, but thanks so much uh, for coming. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thank you.